If you don't know about The Toy, one of the most insane movies ever, let me explain. It's a comedy from 1982 starring Richard Pryor as an out-of-work journalist who gets purchased as a toy for the young son of a white Louisiana business mogul. I know what I want. Right, wait, right. The black man. Yeah. He wants the black man. But, but no, no, there's no, not today, not now, not never. Pryor's character is named Jack Brown, his purchaser is named U.S., and the son he's purchased for is referred to as master by the other adults. I think we're going to have to butter your bread. <laughs> oh, yeah. and you, no! Oh, my. oh no! Oh, you can't! Oh, uh, I can't be bought. No, yeah. uh -huh. no, this got settled into civil war. No, no, you no, can't no. have slaves. No, no, no. We it's a clever, provocative premise for a really twisted, dark comedy about race and exploitation and the legacy of slavery in the American market economy, and totally up Pryor's alley. But that's not what the movie is. Oh no. And that's what's so insane about it. What it is about is getting pied in the face, punched in the balls, covered with oatmeal, covered with oatmeal again, and pied in the face some more. Even when the Grand Wizard of the KKK shows up, there are a couple throwaway racial jokes, but it's really just for a bit more chaotic fun, as he ends up getting knocked face first into a bowl of chocolate pudding. And ultimately, it's about exactly what HBO says. A billionaire, his spoiled son, and a writer hired to become a human toy learn there are things money can't buy, like love, in this heartwarming comedy. I love you, Jack. I love you too, Harry. And I love you. I love you, Daddy. I really love you. It's a truly bizarre instance of a movie with a strong core concept buried under scene after scene of painfully unfunny slapstick and painfully unearned sentimentality. There are only two good scenes in this movie, and both of them are scenes of Richard Pryor's character Jack being bought. The first is when the little master buys him in the store. I want him. He's not for sale. Why not? Because he's a person. Daddy said anything I wanted, anything in the store. You can't buy a human being, Eric. Well, why not? Here, the child's inability to recognize Jack's humanity, or see him as anything other than just another toy for his amusement, is a funny and disturbingly literal demonstration of the ongoing commodification of black people in America, particularly in the context of entertainment. It's over, because they're not going to sell you anymore. They got a new toy to sell now, called the Jack Brown, me, the wind-up asshole. The second is when, after the two have inexplicably become friends and joined forces to rebel against the father, the rebellion gets quashed when the father buys out Jack by offering him a real job as a journalist. To show Jack that he can't win, the father forces one of his senior employees to humiliate himself by dropping his pants. Truth has nothing to do with reality. Any one of these people will say what I want them to say, because I am reality. That's reality. The scene works because it takes one of the most hackneyed slapstick gags there is and doesn't play it for laughs at all. It's just a genuinely chilling display of the power that employers have over the people who work for them, black or white. Is that bad out there? Person. The presence of these two scenes is what makes everything else feel so mind-bendingly weird. In the central arc of the film, we start here. You can't buy a human being, Eric. It's against law, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mr. Morehouse, doesn't my daddy make the laws? And end here. The next year, he's going to have two weeks. One week with me, one week with you. If you browse the internet for what people are saying about the toy, you'll find a lot of people who presumably grew up with it saying, in essence, there's nothing wrong with this movie because race is irrelevant. And they're actually half right, because for most of the movie, race is irrelevant. But that's precisely what's wrong with it. Not because every movie starring a black person has to thematize race, that would be weird in a different way, but because this particular movie does thematize it on the most foundational level then builds nothing on top of it. 
The fact that even the KKK are mere fodder for more slapstick when they show up near the end just goes to show how utterly detached from its starting idea the movie has become. Yet, the point of this video isn't to attack the toy, but to show how even if you have an inspired conceit for a film, disaster can result if you incorrectly choose what kind of film you're going to make out of that conceit. Everything wrong with this movie, which, to be clear, is most of it, results almost inevitably from adhering to the conventions of family-friendly Hollywood comedy as it was practiced in the 80s and early 90s. The slapstick and sentimentality and clear message about accepting and loving your family, which fits so poorly on top of a premise suited for a wicked, cutting satire, all come about because the filmmakers chose to yoke that premise to the generic form shared by movies like Home Alone. The upshot of this situation is that, in an era of unnecessary reboots and remakes, the toy is a rare example of a film ideally fit for a remake. I can imagine a bleakly hilarious and unsettling and insightful adaptation of the toy being made today if the idea were taken up by someone whose style of comedy and thematic interests are in alignment with the material. The ball's in your court, Jordan Peele.